this thing on? Okay, cue exciting podcast intro. We were created carefully by a creative creator who crafted the cosmos. He caressed the soul of the earth when he came. A baby, crying in a crib that darkness could not comprehend. And then he grew and did his most creative act yet. He painted us red, marking us clean with his death. And he rose again, giving us new threads, so you could look like him, friend. Creative and called. You are more like God than you've been told. Welcome to the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Hey family, welcome back to another episode of the Unboxed, Called and Creative Podcast. Um, I am your host, Iman the Messenger, as I say every week. Um, today, we are going to talk about um, a prophetic word, actually. So, the Lord actually gave me a prophetic word for um, all the different creatives that watch and listen to this podcast. So, whatever you do, um, whatever unboxed, called, and creative individual you are um, i believe that this word is for you Um, especially those of you who have been um you'll see you'll see um so firstly um let's just pray so that uh this word can really sink into your heart father god i just pray that as i release this word um that those who find themselves in a hard place father god will be able to come out of it in jesus name and i just pray father that this word will uh, produce a good amount of fruit god in people's lives oh lord in jesus name amen 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 so here's the prophetic word don't create out of fear and believe that it is zeal don't create out of fear and believe that this is zeal so we're going to be looking at a few scriptures um let's look at matthew 16 21 to 23 it says this from that time jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders chief priests and scribes and to be killed and to be raised up on the third day and yet peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying god forbid it lord this shall never happen to you but he turned and said to peter get behind me satan you are a stumbling block to me for you are not setting your mind on god's purposes but men's and interestingly enough this was actually immediately um after peter got it right and peter in in the same chapter peter had um had just identified jesus as the son of god right and um jesus says to him hey you know you know what you're not going to be called simon anymore you're going to be called peter because on this rock i will build my church and so peter gets a whole uh or simon gets a whole name change to becoming peter because of his revelation of jesus being the son of god um that the father revealed to him and it kind of tells us that it is not enough to know god in a moment but you have to continually and daily know him um i say this because as i said peter um literally just a few a few verses before identifies that god is um that jesus is god you know that jesus is the son of god and um (laughs) you know a few steps later he he's basically out of the will of god a few verses later he is out of the will of god why because of something called fear right and then we're going to get into that now so john 18 
verses 10 to 11 it says then simon peter since he had he had a sword drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear and the slave's name was malchus so jesus said to peter put the sword into the sheath the cup which the father has given me am i not to drink it so jesus here is talking about the cup of um of suffering the crucifixion that he was going to go through now let's read john 18 25 to 27 now simon peter was still standing and warming himself so they said to him you are not one of the of his disciples as well are you he denied it and said i am not one of the slaves of the high priest who was related to the one whose ear peter cut off said did i not see you in the garden with him Peter then denied it again and immediately a rooster crowed. Now, let's link all these three scriptures together, right? So firstly, we've got um, Peter, you know, as I said, he's just been, he's just been named Peter, right? He's just been given um, that status because he has correctly identified who Jesus really is, right? And... You know, we see here that Jesus, it even says, right, from that time, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders, chief priests and scribes to be killed and to be raised up on the third day. So Jesus has been taking his time to explain God's will to each of the disciples. So they are aware that this is the will of god like they're, they're aware that you know jesus is to suffer and jesus is to die and you know this is the son of god telling them this right like you would imagine that if the son of god is saying this then clearly this is the will of god this is the best way to go right this is going to have the best outcome and G- peter it says and yet peter took him aside and said uh, and began to rebuke him saying god forbid it lord this shall surely never happen to you and so god says to him get behind me satan now why does he call him why does he call him satan he's not necessarily talking to peter himself but he's talking to satan who had infiltrated peter how did satan infiltrate peter through fear through fear peter was so scared that jesus was going to die or was going to um go away that peter allowed satan to enter him and to use him right and let's link that now with the other two verses so we've got you know simon peter then draws he then takes out a sword and he's cutting one of the high priest slaves ears so this is when they came to arrest jesus right so this is sometime later the second verse is where um the high priest and all of his like bodyguards and soldiers they came to arrest jesus right because jesus told told the disciples hey like they're gonna come and get me you know like i am going to suffer i'm going to die and so they come and peter is still in fear peter has not received the will of god peter has not uh what's this word called he has not abided in christ enough to be settled with god's will that he takes it upon himself to cut off this slave's ear in order to fight against these people so that they can't take jesus and Jesus says it once again to him. He says, put the sword into the sheath, the cup which the father has given me, am I not to drink it? So he's telling Peter once again, like this suffering I'm about to go through, I've told you already that I need to drink it, that this is necessary, right? This is necessary. Now, as I said, we get to John 18, uh, 25 to 27. And, you know, Peter's, uh, this is when Jesus has been taken away right jesus has been taken away jesus is on trial and the disciples have scattered right and peter is kind of um 
hanging around the courtyard of where Jesus is being held because he, you know, he still wants to see, you know, what's going on and he wants to see what's going to happen to Jesus. But he's somewhat incognito. So you can imagine like he's probably wearing like a hood and he's probably like covered up a bit uh, just so that people don't recognize him. And, you know, people start asking him questions because they, they notice him. They say, so are you not one of his disciples as well? He denies it. I'm not. And then one of the slaves of the high priest who was related to the one whose ear Peter cut off said, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied it again and immediately a rooster crowed. Isn't it crazy how there is literally this link of fear that trails all of these scriptures, right? It's, it's funny how um, one of the relatives of the slave that Peter, you know, cut the ear off of is recognizing him and going, aren't you X, Y, Z? And Peter, all Peter can say, no, nah, no, nah, it wasn't me. Now, this gives us great, great insight, right? This gives us great, great insight. This tells us that Peter did not cut off the guard's ear for Jesus, like solely for Jesus. And I think that's how, you know, this um, passage is preached a lot of the time that like Peter just had a lot of zeal and um, he just, he loved Jesus so much that that was the sole reason as to why he tried to cut off this, um, cut off this slave's ear, right? But we see here that actually it was bigger than that. Peter feared for his life not just feared that jesus would be taken away but peter feared for his own life peter still wanted to have a certain amount of control over his own life over or over what he was doing right and you know i wrote here um that peter cut off the guard's ear for jesus but thereafter denied jesus three times because he feared for his life more than his love and trust in Jesus. And so we see here that the root of Peter cutting off the guard's ear was not zeal, but fear. You know, um, it was not zeal, but it was fear. And <clears throat> this kind of leads me now to the prophetic word for creatives, right? Um, and I pray that you guys will hear, hear me um, with open hearts. Many of you who will listen to this or will watch this, um, God is highlighting to me that many of you, um, <laughs> many of you believe that you are being zealous, right, in what you make, in what you do, and in a sense, you are doing it for him, but you're doing it without him. And it's, it's really important that we don't create in that way because actually when we create for Jesus but we do it without Jesus it is always based on our own fears whether it be the fear that we're failing him whether it be the fear that we um we if we don't do this thing then it won't happen whether it be the fear of um what we are seeing with our own eyes Whereas Jesus may be on a completely different plane. He might be on a completely different plane of thought. And so I wrote here, many are zealous to do things for God or fulfill what God has said in their own way because of fear and not righteous zeal. To do it with him and for him, sorry, to do it without him, for him, is a fruit of fear. Fear that what God has said will not come to pass. Fear that you'll miss out on what he has said and fear that you'll fail him. And so I'm reminded of John 15 now where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in you will produce much fruit. But those who don't remain in me will be cut off and thrown into the fire and he also says that if you don't remain in me 
then you can do nothing. He says, like, without me, you know, you severed from the vine, a branch severed from the vine can do nothing. It can produce no fruit. And so many of you um, who are listening to this or watching this, you've been doing a lot of things in your own strength. And I just feel the Lord just saying, you know, repent, turn away from doing things in your own strength and create with me otherwise what you do produce it may have um what's this word called it may have um impact it may have influence but it does not mean it was my fruit like people may be entertained by it people may like it people may share it um you may get some form of notoriety from it but it does not mean that I called you to making that because you did not make it in union with me. You made it by yourself. And if you're making it by yourself, as Jesus says, it is not fruit to him. It is not real fruit. And so um, I want us to really take heed. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy to get into a place where we are doing things out of fear, just like Peter right the lord is saying one thing but we are saying no we're doing this for the lord we're doing this for you jesus but we're not actually doing it for jesus we're doing it because of all the factors of fear that is in our own hearts all of the insecurities um all of our um our self-righteous tendencies like we have to make sure that whatever it is that we're creating whatever it is that we are doing it is in line with the will of god and how do we do that as i said earlier we have to have this mindset where we are continually knowing god on a daily basis it is not good enough uh, that you've had a moment with god whereby you have identified him correctly and he has identified you and then you live off of that one moment no the bible says that Um, give us this day our daily bread right there is a daily bread that we get from god that daily bread being his daily word right he says that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of god and so we realize here that there's a link between bread and god's word and um we ought to get god's word daily within ourselves otherwise um we become people who are not actually abiding in the vine and so therefore we are not producing the fruit that comes from eating from jesus's table we are producing our own fruit and that fruit will not last um so yeah please take heed um when we do produce things with jesus when we do create with the lord um there's an ease that comes with it as well um there's an ease there's a rest that comes with it because jesus enables us he gives us the power to follow what he's saying right the word the word of god says that it is god who wills in us the desire and the power to do what pleases him so yeah that's been your prophetic word um for today um i pray that you will take heed i pray that you will listen i pray that um it will change the way that you are creating in this season and so i'll say the tagline again don't create out of fear and call it zeal don't create out of fear and call it zeal have a good one Hey, Eman here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this podcast episode or listening to this podcast episode. Um, We really appreciate it over here. We're just trying to reach as many unboxed, called and creative people as possible. And with you watching it, liking it, sharing it and commenting, this really does help a ton. So please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you haven't shared, if you haven't commented, Um, or given the review for the podcast, uh, please, please, please do that uh, now if you can. Okay, till next time.